Zone 2 training. You've been exercising wrong this whole time and will feel drained on your next trip. I've been practicing Zone 2 training for over a year and I credit that Zone 2 training for crushing Kilimanjaro without any issues. And for someone who's always done a fair amount of running, over the last year since I focus on Zone 2, my aerobics has been increasing and improving substantially since incorporating Zone 2 training. And I really want to share this with you. If you've desired to climb Kilimanjaro or do anything that's fairly physically challenging over a long period of time, Zone 2 training is going to be perfect for you. I can officially say that Zone 2 training will help prepare you for anything from walking miles in Rome. There's a lot of walking in Rome. Great things to see. Hiking to the Everest Base Camp or hiking to another one of those beautiful castles on some hill in Germany. Well, by practicing Zone 2 training, you will have many benefits, including better aerobic capacity without all of the hard joint strain that you get from traditional running. And by traditional running, I mean running hard and fast. You also experience improved heart health and efficiency, better metabolic health, and be able to perform harder in long-term tasks without breaking a sweat. And believe it or not, Zone 2 training is a leading indicator of living a longer lifespan. No matter what age you are, and there's a lot of evidence to show that people living longer lives have always focused on being able to walk and be able to maintain their low impact exercise over long periods of time. And the more you do it, the better your body is conditioned and the healthier it runs, even in your older ages. And the better your body runs through your older age. You're probably asking yourself, what is this snake oil, Don? What exactly is this Zone 2 training? Well, let's get into that. I was very skeptical of Zone 2 training when I first heard about it. How could running slower, which seems counterintuitive from everything I've learned growing up, that running hard and sweating harder and no pain, no gain gets better benefits. How could this slower running and easy kind of movement style be more beneficial to improving your fitness. After learning about it, I talked my wife into trying it out with me as well, but it was hard at first. I knew I needed to run slow, but exactly how slow? That's the hard part. What is this zone two training? Conceptually, when your heart is working and you're moving around, your heart goes into five different stages and these stages greatly affect how hard your different your body's working to keep up with the amount that you're asking of it. And zone two is effectively the highest you can push your heart in those five zones before you start going into an upper, more expensive and less efficient energy system. And so zone one and zone two and even everything below zone one, or if you count everything you know below zone two is zone one, everything below zone two is basically your low aerobic energy system. And it operates in a way that's always keeping your heart beating. You're even using a sitting down, taking a shower, driving your car. This is your basic energy system and it's always there keeping you moving. And so the more efficient it is, the higher your zone two cap slowly pushes up and you become more capable. So. When you start with your zone two training, you might find it's very hard to run at first, but the more you start working at it and the more you do the zone two training, you're training that lower energy system, it gets more efficient. And so eventually you can start running after some period of time. And what's fascinating is learning these zones is a very personal experience. We can use fitness watches and other gadgets to kind of give us an idea of how hard our heart is beating. But this only gives us an indication. But you can actually experience and feel how your body is doing in the different zones. And so zone two, when you get a good idea of how zone two feels or when you're exceeding zone two, you know when you're sort of pushing into that high aerobic system and you're then exceeding the capabilities of your zone two and your body needs to the higher output and more efficient energy system. While the high aerobic system 
can be trained separately than the Zone 2 training, and you should train it. The important thing is you want to focus a strong base in Zone 2 because it's much more efficient. And the more you push your Zone 2 bar up, the more capable and more stuff you can do without exceeding your Zone 2 limit. Because once you do exceed that Zone 2, you start breathing hard, your body's working harder, it becomes less manageable for your body to keep up with the amount of work you're having it do. And that's where you start getting sore, you start feeling tired, it starts working your body in a way it's, it's, it needs to go all out for the activity you're doing. And this is when you just can't keep up with the activity you're doing and it gets hard and you will be sore. It will have to take time off from your adventuring or you have to slow down. So effectively, your body has two aerobic energy systems that I'm going to greatly simplify into the low aerobic and the high aerobic. And zone 2 training is effectively the maximum amount you can push your lower energy zone. Once you start exceeding your zone 2, then you start getting into that high aerobic zone and you're starting to work out different energy system. And so that's why you can kind of categorize your workouts into two different things you're focusing on in two different extremes. Of course, you still get zone 2 training in the other zones, but the, when you're pushing zone 4, because it's wearing your body out much more, you're much more likely to injure yourself if you're doing zone 4 runs every single day. While you can pretty much run zone 2 every single day without really risking energy because your body is running much more efficiently and you can run much longer distances in zone 2 versus zone 4. So what's important is even though you're switching to the high aerobic system in zone 4 and zone 4 and beyond or even zone 3, your zone 2 low aerobic system is still giving the baseline energy and everything above that is stacked on it. And so the higher your base is, the easier your body's working in those high aerobic zones as well. And you can kind of push your peaks for how well your body can efficiently operate at high-end exercise. What's important is everyone's going to have a different zone too. So when I tell you my zone two numbers, they're not going to be the same as yours. So you have to kind of get a good feel for what your zone two feels like. There are two good ways to check if you're starting to exceed your zone 2. If you're in zone 2 or lower, you should be able to talk clearly. This is called the talk test. And so by a talk test, you should be able to say a sentence. So my basically I can talk and I'm not breathing hard with you right now. And so if you can kind of do this and also if you have a partner you're running with and you're able to talk normally without breathing hard, you're probably in zone two and that's good. If you're needing to take breaks for deep breaths, then you're definitely above zone two and that you're engaging that high aerobic system. High aerobic because you need more oxygen to keep up with the demand. The other test, and this is the one I prefer, is the nose breathing test. And so simply put, if you're in zone two, you can close your mouth and breathe through your nose the entire time. And so if you're breathing easily through your nose, you're likely in zone two. If you're really breathing hard and having a hard time keeping up like, you know, this is too much. And so you should be kind of just breathing softly through your nose. And that should be sufficient for zone two. If you can't keep up with it and you have to open your mouth, you're probably exceeding your zone two. So these are two good ways without a heart rate monitor to know if you're in zone two. Because believe me, kind of even with the fitness watches, trying to measure and set your zone two properly so that your watch tells you where your zone two is, is actually kind of tricky. Just when you start, when you buy your fitness watch and it tells you you're in zone two, you're not necessarily in your zone two. You might use some out of the box calculations that could be entirely wrong for you. And so understand that these two tests will help calibrate your zone two and let you know if you're actually in zone two or not. Of course, zone two training is a low impact exercise. It gives you the foundation 
of how fast and how capable you are before exceeding your zone 2. The higher base you have for zone 2 training, the more you're going to be able to build on top of it before starting to get into the higher aerobics. And even your higher aerobics, when you're starting to go into the energy system, it will be higher and faster because your zone 2 training is high. For example, if I'm able to run 13 miles per hour as zone 2, then once I start breaking into the higher aerobic zones, it's going to build on top of it. So maybe the fastest I can run on top of that is down to 10 or 9 minutes per mile, which is not too fast, but it's a good starting area. And let's say my zone 2 training has led me to get down to a 9 or 10 minute mile per hour mark. Now I'm able to get much higher mile per hour threshold down to maybe five or six minutes when I start getting to the high aerobic zones. And so it simply makes your high aerobic more capable. And the zone two is the lower energy system that's always running and keeping you going. Okay, so zone two training is simple. Run slower to run faster. A good friend wanted to join us for that Kilimanjaro climb, but he had no experience ever climbing mountains. Not any mountains, not high alpine or anything. And really, this is very hard to do. Kilimanjaro is not an easy mountain to start with. He started with Kilimanjaro. So I wanted to make sure he was well prepared for being able to climb that Kilimanjaro with us. And I told him everything I knew about zone two training. Now I won't recommend this to everyone and it sounds pretty crazy, but after doing zone two training, leading up to Kilimanjaro, he not only crushed it, he climbed to the top with us and did better than some of our mountaineering friends that have climbed quite some mountains in Washington. He almost summited twice with me. We were going to go up and summit again, but the weather really wasn't cooperating. The trick to zone 2 training is realizing you can do it all the time and anywhere from climbing the stairs to parking all the way back at a grocery store and walking all the way to the door, walking to work or jogging in whatever neighborhood you might be in on travel or at home. And suddenly a lot of exercises can start training your zone two as long as you can get up into that zone two range. And even zone one training has some benefit. Zone two training is obviously just pushing your lower energy system harder. When I started off with Zone 2 training, I started very frustrated. I could barely manage a 13 to 14 minute mile per hour pace. And I couldn't even really jog. I could jog a little bit and then I started exceeding the Zone 2 and I had to walk for a little bit of time. And this could happen for a lot of people who've never trained Zone 2. So I must urge you to have some patience because Zone 2 training is also something that's not built overnight. You're gonna have to do it day in, day out for a couple weeks, even months before you start seeing some minor improvements. But when you do, it will be super beneficial and I guarantee your body will start operating much more efficiently. It'll change your health and you will notice a lot of health benefits from it, but you have to do it for months. You have to be ready for the long haul. So again, it's about consistency. With time and commitment of my zone 2 training over all this time, I can now push around 10 mile per hour pace and I'm getting down to about a 9 minute mile per hour pace. And what's really cool is I don't really even need to walk anywhere now. I can kind of just do a slow jog to the grocery store and slow jog pretty much anywhere without breaking a sweat, which kind of looks a little odd because you don't expect someone running around in normal clothes but you know when your aerobic system is at that capacity it doesn't really feel hard and so your body is capable of doing that zone 2 jogging no problem as mentioned wearing a lot of modern fitness watches will give you kind of that idea of zone 2 training but it'll take some calibration and so take note of the two training the testing methods as I mentioned being the talk test and the nose breathing test to kind of figure out where your zone 2 is and make sure when you're feeling like you can't breathe through your nose that's the specific maximum beats per minute that your zone 2 threshold is and you want to make sure your zone 2 on your watch reflects it. And once you have calibrated your zone 2, then you're in a good spot to start just using your watch to check in 
and even set some alarms if you're going above or below your zone two and you can kind of use this just as a bar for your workouts. But you might not even need it once you start getting a good idea of how it feels naturally when you're in zone two. It can vary for different people, but in general, zone two ranges from 60 to 75% of your maximum heart rate. For example, if my maximum heart rate is 200 beats per minute, which is fairly high, but for this example, let's do it. The zone two range of 60 to 75% makes my zone two at 120 to 150 beats per minute. That's a sweet spot for being able to measure with your watch of if you're in zone two and trying to keep your heart in that zone two for as long as you can. It's kind of about a raw amount of hours you put your heart into that range and that's how you get generally higher fitness levels into zone two. So to start off, I'd recommend at least three to four hours of zone two training. The more you do, obviously it has more benefits, but I would recommend at least three to four hours every week. And you can even prefer zone two training over harder workouts. And so if you do a harder workout, it only really has to be done once a week. And the rest of your workouts, for the other five to six days can all just be zone two training. So getting that three to four hours of zone two training becomes a little bit easier. And generally, if I go out for a run, I'll run for at least an hour, an hour and a half, just in zone two. And you can, the more you do it, you can start just kind of getting the hang of walking to work in zone two, and you can make it easier to close on those hours of zone two training. If you're interested in fitness and travel, we only covered part of the equation of endless energy in this video, but there's still so much to learn. I'm gonna pop that video right up here. Check it out and you'll learn more for the steps to achieving that infinite energy for travel.